Hey guys, what up? I am Kyler Wilson. I'm Monica Cassari. This is the before, the after, and the after. Okay. Hey. Boom. We are going. We're going to Avengers. Show them your shirt. Show. Is that, is, does anybody else really matter besides that one? <laughs> but I have Silver <laughs> Silver and Spider Man. And uh, this guy. Uh, she's being stupid. She's wearing an Avengers shirt. Good thing we wear these shirts all the damn time. This is Otherwise, true. we'd look like nerds showing up there with Avengers shirt on. We're going to look like nerds regardless. <laughs> Ew. It's okay. But we support the brand all the time. This is true. Alright, now look. We're, we're just gonna we're just gonna cut the shit and get down to brass tacks. Which is a great channel that my friend Brandon Brosius hosts with uh, with Ramsey, so check it out. Um so you guys might know my opinion on uh, the Avengers, or you might not, but if you don't, uh, I'm I'm very, very, very hesitant uh, with the Marvel movies anymore with, with the way they've been expanding. Uh, I think we've been getting too many of them. They need to slow down and, and like, milk it, man. Milk it. Don't give me 50 movies a year. Anyways, that being said, these trailers have enticed me. Monica, what about you? Yeah, I'm curious. Well, what do you think? I mean, do you think it's going to be a total bomb? I don't think it's going to be so amazing. But then again, I mean, I'm just going in expecting pow, pow, shoot them up. Pow, pow, shoot them up. There's a song in there somewhere. Pow, pow, shoot them up. Pow, That's pow, shoot them up. or something. No, maybe it is. Or something. Oh, I don't know. I honestly am not expecting much, especially with the story. Because this universe is so expansive and so many things happen with it, I honestly almost don't even care because of how much it gets twist and turn. So it's like, we'll see what happens. Maybe oh, my mind will be changed. Uh, maybe so. Maybe not. I don't know. I haven't watched any reviews on this uh, yet because I don't want uh, my opinion to be any more swayed than it already is. And honestly, <laughs> my opinion is pretty swayed just with my own opinions. I just said that my opinion is swayed by my opinion. <laughs> Anyways, what I mean is I've just I'm, I've got these preconceptions of how superhero movies work now, and how they're kind of playing on on this side of us that you know they want us to they want us to feel like their heroes are in peril, but their heroes aren't in peril, and and there's there's. Anyways. <laughs> I was just like basically contradicting myself because I'm like, uh, I'm just going in expecting a pow pow. Look how small that girl is in that big ass truck. <laughs> but um, basically, I'm like, I said I'm expecting a pow pow shoot 'em up. We all love to see the powers and the special effects that they do. It's just, I guess, my worry is, is that, wow. What am I expecting from this? Yeah, I don't how, do you, how do you get any better than the Avengers? I don't know. Like what the to first expect. movie, you know what I mean? Yeah. And and that movie, I still have. I, if any if anybody ever wants to debate, I'll do it live on YouTube, um, and I'll debate you why Avengers is a big sellout movie, even though I enjoyed it. Um, but you know, once like they they did everything they could, really couldn't they? I mean, if if they beat, they just barely beat what they did the last time. So anything that they go up against. Now, if it's stronger, how do they beat that, you know? Like, so how do you get any better than what we've already gotten? I don't know. Those are my conceptions going in. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, I'm almost thinking that maybe I'm hoping for a decent story because back when I used to watch X-Men, the cartoon, every Saturday morning, I watched it because the stories were cool. Not only the powers, but I felt like the cartoon was able to sync the story and the powers fairly well. And it wasn't special effects. It was just no, it's just good. It's just good storytelling. So that's what I'm scared. I guess I'm not really expecting that from these because I feel like we have yet to really see a full story fully play out. Simply because I'm hesitant because there there are they're adding what three character well three three good guy characters mm. and they've got this bad guy. Plus we've already got we've got the the old Avengers anyway. I'm I'm just trying to figure out how how much screen time is everybody going to get? Is it even going to be worth it? I'm gonna say jam packing everybody in. <laughs> yeah, I mean, is it going to be is it going to be worthless? Uh, I mean, who knows? I mean, you know, 
Marvel obviously has a formula that is working for them right now, even though I think that universe is going to just implode on itself at some point. But it's working right now. Um, so I'm sure it's going to be entertaining. The question is, is it going to stand up and be good? And, and that I'm, I'm just not so sure about. Um, so anyways, those are our thoughts going into it. Um, hopefully our thoughts coming out of it are better. And we're, we're not going into this wanting to hate it at all right. like we want to we want to love this film uh so don't think it's like unfriended where we went into that thinking we were getting ourselves into a giant joke um it's not this I, i'm just reserved i'm reserved and we'll see what happens i'm i'm hoping that uh that this movie is incredible so uh we'll catch you on the flip side well actually you'll probably see us standing in line uh we're probably gonna yeah show you guys the popcorn line because i bought a ticket sorry correct she bought hey Ta uh, shout out to Regal uh, and and Fandango for the way they've got everything set up. We already got our tickets. We're going in. We're going to go pow, 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 type, type in our, our info, and boom, we're walking in. Don't have to do that. I just show my phone. Boom. Regal app. Regal, Regal slash Fandango. This is not a paid advertisement for Regal either. We just enjoy the app. Yeah, yeah. So. I get to show that bad boy. Oh, 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 boom. There, we see it now. And they're like, there you go. Boom. Mr. and Mrs. Marvel. <laughs> Ooh. All right. Mm -mm, Miss Marvel got her power stolen by Rogue. Mm -hmm. For some of y'all that didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we'll see you guys there. Peace. Bye. So, uh, we got here and we see all these cars in a place that cars are never parked. And we're like, oh, God. Monica was like, hell to the no. Uh -uh. But then we found out it was a car show. So, we're really happy. Yay. <laughs> Still probably going to be really busy, though. All right, wish us luck. So, it's remarkably dead. What do you say? So far. Biggest Marvel flop of all time. Uh, so, I, just side note, um, I'm really shocked at how many uh, young, young girls are apparently totally in Age of Ultron. More power to you. And they say that there's an issue with girls what watching these films. There's not enough female characters in the things. A conspiracy it don't matter. They still us. watch it. Girls still watch it. There's a powerful and they like it just like us boys. So bing, bam, boom. Right it's like they look like they've been having some issues. Uh, because they, we got went the, out the they got the popo. They got the popo out. Friday. Um. Okay. So what do we think? It smells like farm <laughs> I love how I always, have, when you ask that, I always have something else You, you, never, you my never answer my question, ever. You just you say something off I the do. wall. I do. It gets me catchy. I thought it was great. I thought it was great for what it was. I don't like that. Sorry, had some more technical difficulties. It's my fault. The camera sucks. Um, anyways. So, thoughts initially walking out of the theater. My personal opinion, no different than the first Avengers movie, which I was really hoping for. And I don't really feel like, I don't really feel like this movie delivered on that. It just felt like the same thing that I watched last time. It's, you know, kind of one lead bad guy and a bunch of zombies that follow him or, or do what he tells them to. And the Avengers fight. Pretty much. Um, I guess my thoughts walking out the ears, it was entertaining. It was, um, this, the story, um, it was okay. Um, I feel like they're really trying to reach and grab at trying to really merge all of these worlds together by piecing their stories amongst every Marvel movie that they have out now. They're throwing little things in there to try to make them equal up to this, you know? And um, ultimately, I, I liked it. I, the action was good, just like the last one. Um, they did kind of go so fast you almost didn't really catch everything so yeah it was really quick cut there there's some i think they could have slowed it down a little bit in some of the action scenes i also found myself kind of like there were a couple scenes where i was like wait a second how did we get here yeah there were a couple times where it's almost unnecessariness yeah there was there towards the middle there was this whole big this whole big stuff of of like them doing this like feel good thing back and forth with one another, you know, on a two by two basis. And it was, it was felt, I don't know, unneeded. Yeah. It, yeah, <laughs> it was almost, I mean, I guess that 
amount of action and it kind of overshadows it, though. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. If you like Avengers, if you like superhero films, you're going to love it. So there's, you know, go see it. You know, we're definitely not saying don't go see it. Yeah. But it also... See, I felt like Avengers is a movie that could have pulled in people who weren't into superhero films because of because of the way that they made it. This, on the other hand, it doesn't feel like... Like, if I weren't into superhero films, I don't think this movie would make me any more into them at all. And I don't know. Maybe... I mean, they, they tried really hard. You can tell that they really try to space out everybody's timing with each other and... Yeah, but see, that's part of the problem from a filmmaking standpoint is you can tell that they're trying to do those things. They're trying to... <laughs> and I'm a viewer. <laughs> I mean, I know a little bit, but it... Yeah. You see that burn? You see that burn? Because people don't wear hats or SPF. Um, you know... It, it... Ultimately, it's fun. We'll watch it again. And I'll... He'll probably watch it like... 800 million times like you did the regular, the first Avengers. I did watch it a lot. Um, so. I don't know. I, I, I feel like, uh, I feel like it, it's success. Here's what I really think. If I'm just like being unadulterated and not trying to, to doll it up. Here's what I think. I think this movie proves that it is the beginning of the end of the Marvel franchise as I've been predicting that it's coming all along. And, <laughs> And it's because of the way, like, it just felt like another Avengers movie. It d didn't do anything new. They've set the bar so high. They've cranked out so many good superhero films that they're they're getting to a point where they're bottlenecking. They don't have anywhere to go. And so they're trying to do, and we'll talk in, a, like, a full, unadulterated, spoiler-full session after this, obviously. But they're trying to do things, you can tell, but they're they're not they're not accomplishing. So, anyways... If you like superhero films, go see it. You'll like it. If you don't, you probably honestly could skip it. I mean, movies for guys that like movies. That's <laughs> well, what it that's, is. you know what's funny though is, is I said this earlier, there were a lot of girls in there. I was actually really, really shocked. I was really shocked yeah. at how many girls are. And I'm not talking about like, like 17, 18 year old girls that, you know, probably don't care, but like little girls, like, you know, five to Teens. 12, 13, yeah. you know, like they. They were all they were all about it. So uh, you know, more power to them. They're reaching out to a broader audience than they ever have, probably. Um, they there have, are like, a lot of hot dudes in that movie, so I don't understand why they need feel the need to throw in a female character. <laughs> I think uh, if anybody throw in She Hulk, I mean, it's only right, right? Oh, I'm sure it's coming. Please. Um, anywho, yeah, go go check it out. Uh, that's that's my thoughts. You got anything to wrap it up with? Uh, I think that was it. All Until right. Well, next time. overall, good film. Uh, Stay tuned for our full, uh, spoiler full portion of uh, this episode uh, after these messages brought to you by Kyler's Pillows. We're going to make that work. <laughs> Peace. Are you having trouble sleeping? How am I ever going to get to sleep? No problem. Get a Kyler pillow. Oh, thanks, Kyler Pillow. You're amazing. This pillow has a built-in alarm clock. <sighs> Time to get up. It'll even let you know when you're supposed to go to bed. Oh, and bonus offer, if you God. buy right now, we'll give you the model that bathes you. You know, before my Kyler Pillow, I just couldn't get to sleep any time I wanted. But now, I sleep through the night every night. Don't have another sleepless night. Get a Kyler pillow. Sold in limited quantities at a movie holics near you. Okay, so we've had a day to think about it. Um, this movie didn't set well with me overnight. Not gonna lie. Not sure about mine. We haven't talked about it. Uh, but before we get into it, we're gonna start with the previews. So to kick it right off, Mission Impossible Five. We've already talked about it. Snooze fest. Yeah, I'm not interested in seeing it. <laughs> Snooze fest. I'll wait for DVD to complete my collection. Yes, I've got a problem. You don't need to point it out every single time. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Uh, JP4 or Jurassic World. Um, same preview, different day. I really think this movie's going to blow. I think we should note that the girls next to us, what they were all... What did they say? That oh, they were just so... I can't remember exactly what they said, but they were just so... They are like, oh my god, Jurassic... Or, Oh, yeah, like, oh my god, another Jurassic Park. I'm like, 
Speedy's been playing for like six months. Are you, are you just now? These girls must have been 12. I don't think they've even seen their original ones. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Um, another preview, uh, there's this movie called San Andreas. Uh, we haven't talked about this one yet. It's with The Rock and a girl oh, who's shown her boobs once. Um, I can't remember her name. Grand Theft Auto. Uh, yeah, this has nothing to do with, with, uh, Grand Theft Auto San Andreas. This is about, uh, Earthquake. If you ever watched a movie called Volcano, very similar. Um, I, it's just a disaster film. If, I guess if you like disaster porn, it's for you. I'm not gonna see it. You? Both a no-go. Uh, moving right along. They showed another preview for Pixels. I adore the preview. I can't, I mean, here's the one thing that was kind of depressing to me. It was depressing and it was awesome all in the same time. And Monica said it, at least half of this first. <laughs> she appreciates her age because she can understand those. And then I went, damn, we're getting old. These kids don't have any idea. Like they might know Pac-Man, but they're looking at all these other these other things. I'm like, they have no idea what they're. They, nope. They don't know what Centipede is. They have they no don't... idea what Centipede is. They don't know what Galaga is. They don't know what any of these games are. Like they know Pac-Man. Pac-Man. Like Donkey Kong. What? I know. What is that? They have no idea. So, uh, anyways, I I am really ex excited for this film. I I will probably. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to probably see it in the theaters. Uh, yeah, we'll go. When yeah. Does it come out? So, anyways, moving right along. Saw Fantastic Four. She apparently didn't watch this trailer uh, when it came out a few weeks ago. <laughs> I uh, did. But, I did. I did. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, it just, I don't know. It was something about seeing it again this time. It really, I don't know. It made me want to watch it. I don't know what it was. This trailer is definitely better than the original trailer release. The original trailer was just garbage. It was just awful. Um, it's so funny that I saw on Facebook yesterday, um, people, uh, they were showing the new costumes or whatever, and people were like, Johnny Blaze is black? How are you going to explain that? And I'm like, this is like six months <laughs> in. Where have y'all been? And that's all the thread was, was people commenting on it. I'm like, we've already been through this. Yeah. I about halfway posted your video in there. Because right? <laughs> I'm like, y'all, get with the program. Stop, you know. But yeah, it looks so much, I don't know. I'm more intrigued now than I was before. I mean, I agree. I still don't know. Like, still just kind of looks like a superhero film. But, uh, you know, I don't know. We'll, we'll see. It definitely looks better than the than the first thing they released. So I just really want to see Doctor Doom because I think he's probably my favorite villain. I think Doctor Doom looks better in this than he did in the first. Better, I, I he looked really good in this in this preview. I think he looks really good in this in this. Yeah, preview. I'm excited to see. So, that. anyways, we'll see what happens. Um, I think we all got trolled when they originally released. He was going to be a hacker or or something like or a blogger. He was going to be a blogger <laughs> originally or some or some <laughs> such and. Uh, I think we got trolled. I, that doesn't appear to be the case here. So, uh, who knows? We might we might check it out. Uh, next trailer was for this movie called Tomorrowland, um, adaptation of a Disney park ride. Uh, very weird. I don't know how to. I don't know if I want to see it or if I don't. I feel like I'm over George Clooney. I'm sorry. <laughs> I just I don't sorry, know. George. I just feel like. Mm. Yeah, I I don't know. This this movie looks very bizarre. I don't know what it is. Is the bit is the biggest thing. It like it right. starts off as like kind of a kids film, and the original trailer they released was very like kids film. Uh, but then they released this trailer, and it's way more way more violent than a typical kids film. Yeah, like, I think that's what drew me to it was the kind of action they kind of threw in there. And I was like, okay, are they just trying to get my attention? I mean, or well, is it gonna <laughs> so at the same time though, they're robots, so. Ultimately, I feel like the way that this preview is, is that this girl is just crazy and she's got the schizoids and she's all over Sucker the place. Punch anybody? <laughs> That's what I feel like. Who knows? Well, you know, I, mm. we're probably not going to see it at the theater, but, you know, when it comes out on DVD, we might, I don't know, It's like they Netflix or something. went crazy with the special effects, though. So that, yeah. I think that's what worries me a little bit. Um, let's see. Last one was Ant-Man. We've all, we've all seen this trailer at this point. I refuse to do another trailer trash on it because I don't want to give the movie any more publicity than it deserves. Not excited for this film. Not one bit. I Paul Rudd like, is I'm just really hero. curious. We have everybody right now in the Ventures has already had that comedic... We don't uh, need another Iron Man. Like we do. That's not, what he's gonna be. I and that's, that's what they're what trying to turn him into. I'm just like, I'm just like, whatever, man. I'm so so over that. The one redeeming thing was the uh, was the the train scene where you know it's like it's this just epic funny. train scene and, they, and it just like 
falls over, and that was funny. Uh, but you know, like that's the that's the typical kind of slapstick stuff, which we'll actually talk about later. That that Marvel's built their world off of. Um, but yeah, those are the trailers. Not too bad, oddly enough. Like, what? Fast and Furious got nine trailers. This one got seven. So uh, we're doing we're doing better, Hollywood. Um, yeah. Anyways, we'll move right on to uh, right on to the film. So again, that movie is uh, Avengers: Age of Ultron. What'd you think? I guess now that I've have had time to think about it, I'm still t I'm more torn on it than I was yesterday. Like yesterday, I was yesterday. Your exact words before the camera cut off were, "This is a great movie." Or something like that. Yeah. Now I'm... Um, it was okay, because I'm a fan, but then again, it was just... I have no words to explain it truly, because I feel like it was, like you said, kind of the same thing that we saw. It's the... It, I mean, you know, I, I, I hesitate to use a word like exact, because there's going to be some... Tr but kind of, it's not the exact same. Yeah, okay, I get it, but man, it's 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 basically the same film that we already have. It's just a group of heroes, except for th this is this is what's different. They're already assembled. Half of the fun from the first film was getting to see them come together. Yeah. We don't get that this time. So they're already there. I... So then we just spend an hour and a half with them already there, and they bicker just like they did in the first film. They get mad at each other, and they, they start to fight each other just like they did in the first film. They have to face a main bad guy and faceless drones just like they did in the first film. And they ultimately come out triumphant just like they did in the first film. Like, it is the same film just like, beat for beat. Just like X-Men. X-Men did the same exact thing. They always had that weird just... Well, X Men at least not. I mean, I'm not talking about this. I'm not talking about these BS prequels that we got. <laughs> I'm talking about X Men, X Two, and X Men: The Last Stand. Well, well, a lot of people will argue that The Last Stand is the worst of the three, and X One and X Two are great. Whatever. They still rose the stakes every movie. People died. You know, like yeah, people true. turned bad. You, you know, people turned good. Like th there was there was constant momentum, and in this movie. I did not feel any of that. Yeah, it's almost too wholesome, too family friendly. And that's fine. I'm all about spreading, you know, yay, everything's gonna be okay. But the fact that they hint at stuff happening that would be bad is, I think, what really annoys me the most. I mean, you know, and we don't know what exactly they're gonna do with the with the upcoming films, but this has become, and this is where we're, we're coming at the very end of this whole thing, we're gonna talk about the possibility of the Marvel universe going kaput. Every film that we've seen has this formula that we've that we've just watched. And I'm telling you this one has fallen this movie has fallen flat and people realize it. And it's not saying this movie's going to make a buttload of money. There's no doubt about that, but the reviews are starting to come out already and people are more agreeing with me than they are with other people. You know, like this is a this is a split decision right now. It's not overwhelmingly like everybody for the event for the first Avengers was like, it's amazing, you gotta go see it. <laughs> this film is the people aren't doing that. Except the hardcore fanboys, you know, like but but to the person who just has enjoyed superhero hero films, they're not doing that. So that's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see what happens in the future. I mean, I it's enjoyable from from the same standpoint that Fast and the Furious is enjoyable, but that's not good because like you, what you had in this MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, was something great. We had great films, minus Iron Man two and Captain America. I don't care what you guys say, Captain America's. Freaking useless. I still hadn't even watched the first one. <laughs> Anyways. Um, uh, but we had something special with the MCU, you know? Like, Iron Man and Iron Man 3 were great. I really enjoyed Thor, believe it or not. You know, like I know that that's bizarre. And honestly, for what it's worth, I enjoyed the Captain America film. It's not that I have a problem with the film so much as I have a problem with the character. So that's a, you know, different different conversation. Even the Incredible Hulk, they'd really started to weave all of this stuff together. And it was just, it was feeling great and special. And, and it really felt like that comic book universe. But with, with that with that splash of realism, we no longer have that. That is my opinion. And I'm sticking to it. And I'm sticking to it. I guess I can, I can agree with that. 
So, enjoyable film? Sure. Go watch it. It's fun. You know, like, if, especially if you like comic book films already, like, you'll, you'll enjoy the film. But I bet you you're not going to like it as good as the first film. Bing, bam, boom. What'd you think of Age of Ultron? <laughs> <laughs> Moving right along. <laughs> was it fun? Well, we've already kind of answered this. It was, was fun. fun. It, it was, was fun. fun to watch. It was movies for guys that like movies. But also, as we mentioned in our before and after segments, there were girls who were there. Like, there were young, young girls, girls, which is cool. They're apparently getting into it, which is something that is not, you know, is not been common. So um, hopefully that'll, you know, get people more happy about the fact that, you know, because everybody's like, oh, we exclude girls from this whole thing. Well, I mean, girls are liking it. So you have like eight hot dudes in that movie. How are y'all excluding girls? Exactly. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it, you know, it was fun. Like I, I, like I said, I enjoyed the film. It's just a matter of like looking towards the, the future. The intricacies of it. And, yeah. Yeah. And the future, where is it going to go? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was fun. Absolutely. Uh, moving right along. Was there too much setup? Was there too much setup? Um, I don't. I think they did. I think they have a formula and they follow it every time. I think it was probably the right amount of setup. I don't feel like. I feel like we got, we got right into it. Should this movie have been two and a half hours long? No. Then there was too much setup. <laughs> this this film has so many people in it. It doesn't know where to focus at one time, which was a problem with the first film too. But they did it better in the first film because again we're anticipating the coming together of all that. There were times like. Towards the middle of this film, which we're going to take a quick break here. Spoiler, spoilers, 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 spoilers. Anyways, so um, there was a point in the middle of the film where uh, we go to Hawkeye's wife's house um, with nope, the entire team. No, it's his house well, with his family there. Okay, fine. You made it like they were divorced. They're not divorced. <laughs> We go to Hawkeye's, uh, Hawkeye's and his, like, we go to his house or his family's house, whatever, however you want to word it. Um, everybody goes there, and they break off into twos. <laughs> and, you, and you go, oh, it's because they don't want any single character <laughs> to go through exposition. Let's just knock out two at a time, you know what I mean? Um, and that kind of stuff makes it, feel, uh, makes it feel forced. I'm not trying to add screen time to the movie. I'm just saying that... This is, this is something that you're going to challenge yourself with anytime you have this many leading actors, right. you know. Um, so I think that there was too much setup. I think that the first 15 minutes of the film, we didn't even really need. Vision's makeup. It was gorgeous. Vision looked fucking awesome. He was gorgeous. Um, it's the hugest visual redeeming, redeeming thing of this film to me was the way he looked. He looked, I mean, he just looked... Perfect, I think is actually the, he, really yeah, the word he was to use. Ultimate perfection, like like everything who, was so clean. And who knew that'd be Paul Bettany? I know, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> he's not a, he's not a perfect individual. But uh, I mean, right down to them constantly changing his eyeballs. I don't know if any of y'all noticed that, but watch it next time. But oh, how they would how they would uh, like a computer they basically. Were, yeah, yeah, they were like seeking different things in his eyes, and I was just like, what? Yeah, it was cool. Start off with the cybernetic context and then go to regular eyes and then back up to like all kinds of crazy stuff. So And I'm assuming that, that at least most of that was makeup and prosthetics rather than it looks, CG. Yeah, it looks so. Um, it I looks think really clean. if CG was used, it was just for extra cleanliness. Yeah, just to, just to like give that smooth mm -hmm. look, you know. Um, but yeah, man, Vision looked great. Um, um, I like that he wasn't that super duper kind of purple that we all know to see him in the comics. Yeah. Um, and I'm glad that he didn't have that weird green <laughs> on him as well, because he almost looked like a, a Mardi Gras <laughs> character in the comic books. But no, he looks really clean and sleek. And can I just say, I absolutely love how the Hulk looks now. I don't know if anybody's noticed, but I love that he looks so... He looks better than he did in similar. Hulk and The Incredible Hulk. I mean... I like that he looks, I mean, I know he's CG, but it's like his facial expressions, I just look, I like, I feel like they really cleaned him up a no, lot. No, they've, <laughs> they've definitely gotten better with him, but he's still, he's still at least a partial distraction for me. Like, oh, yeah? And, and it's, because it's just, you look at it and you go, well, it's, you know, it's as good as they can do. 
Like I love he doesn't have green eyes and he has profile eyes. So it's pretty cool. But anyways. She likes eyes. Um, <laughs> anyways, Vision looked great. Non-superhero superheroes. Are they worthless? Specifically, I'm talking about four individuals, one of which you don't get to see a whole lot of, but to name them off, Hawkeye, Black Widow, Falcon, and yes, I'm saying it, Captain America. <laughs> now, they said that all about the first film. They were like, Captain America is useless. Blah, 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 blah. He's useless. Um, I feel like they're trying to make him better. I feel like they're trying to give him more... Um, his magnetic, you know, shield, and you know, apparently they increased his, showed that he has actual super strength. <laughs> I mean, I feel like they're but, trying to like ease us it's into not that super he's strength, viable. Like it's not like Superman super strength. Like, so what, dude? You can kind of lift a, you can lift like a small car, like a Fiat. <laughs> I mean, and I think they're really trying hard to make him to show that he is viable, but ultimately. It's just, it's just <laughs> ridiculous. It's ridiculous, and people will go, Kyler being too hard, it's a comic book movie. But man, they set this world up, not me. I didn't, I didn't write this stuff, they did, okay? So I'm abiding by their rules and their cinematic universe. You got the Hulk, who can take out 100 individuals, and, you got, and you've got Iron Man, who can take out 50 individuals, and you got Thor, who can take out 100 individuals, and then you've got Captain America, and you can take out four individuals. It's like, what are you, you're not helping, man. With the help of the other people that aren't very viable. I feel like they make them all work together because they're all not viable, I think, but if they're together, they're viable. I think Hawkeye might have killed more people in this film than, than Captain America did. And that's because he's a cherry picker. I would, Ooh, love, I, I would love to actually get a count on that. If any of y'all want to go to the theater and count for us, you come back with a number, I'll report it. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm flat out telling you, like... Captain America, it doesn't matter. You got super strength and blah 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 blah. Man, you're still just you're still just a dude. And well, okay, well, Iron Man's just a dude. Yeah, but he's got a billion dollars behind him. It like he he can afford the Hulk Buster, so he's fine. He is just fine. Hulk Buster. Um, <laughs> you know, so so like I, this is these have been some of the biggest detractors for me when it comes to the Marvel M MCU. Uh, because, you know, like, all of these as individual films, like, Captain America's fine as long as it stays in Captain America land. The second you bring him into Avengers land, it's just like, man, nobody, you, you can't do anything to help anybody. That's, oh, well, he leads, Kyler. Yeah, give me a break, dude. And that's pretty much why you don't see people like Hawkeye and Black Widow in the X-Men universe because they're not considered mutants. So yeah, I mean, Black Widow's got, what, she was raised, like, she's... Trying to be she, an She's Hitman. I mean, okay. Hitman's still just a dude, man. He dies. I mean, that's just... I don't like <laughs> non-superhero superheroes in these superhero films. If you want if you want to give them their standalone films, give them their standalone films. Don't include them in a, in a world like this because it's just not believable. I don't buy into it. I can't imagine that any hardcore fanboy does either. Hawkeye should have been down more than once. I mean, I know he was down most of the time in the last movie, and he was down... A lot this movie but ultimately he should be the first one down every time and I, if he, I feel like if he can't survive on his own like the other ones can then he there's no reason for him to be there agreed because this doesn't hold up to everything it really doesn't and sure he has little I could do that, you know, but it's like how much. <laughs> and, he, and he has different arrows, and, and you know, like but it's. But man. against all the robots. Yeah, like th there's a reason why they left the Scarlet Witch at the, at the at the end next to the next to that whatever thingy device. There's a reason they left her there and not him, because he would have died. Survived. <laughs> he would have died. He was so he was just he's like he can fly the plane, I guess. I mean, so that's good. Well, Hawkeye, we thank you for your service, but it's time to go take care thank of your Thank you, family. Hawkeye. <laughs> um, anyways, moving right along. Um, is Aaron Taylor Johnson and Elizabeth Olsen a package deal now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hire one and not hire the other? Because they did Godzilla, uh -huh. and they did this. Yeah. And they were together for both of them. And if they do a Kick-Ass 3, I'm sure that she will be brought in <laughs> as, like, something. <laughs> they went from playing husband and wife to brother and sister. Which has got to be weird. We just watched Godzilla and they're both in there. So this is going to be a thing. Because you know there's always two actors. 
Scarlett Johansson and Chris Evans have been in, what, six other movies together? Are they together? They're not together, but they've been in so many oh. movies together. So I feel like that's happening with... Maybe so. They're actually <laughs> married. I bet in one of their contracts... They're not married. Or they're together. No, they're not. Yeah, they are. Aaron Taylor Johnson has a wife and three kids. Her! Elizabeth Olsen? No, she's with some... No. Hang on, we're cutting. I retract my previous statement. That being said, they're still a package deal. One thing I did want to mention about them, though. Their accents suck. Um, <laughs> they started off good, but then they kind of... You can't hold an accent. Like, accents like that... What is that, like a Russian... Yeah, it was like Russian-ish. Them accents are not easy. And, and it, it was... If, if it was a long sentence, they held it pretty well. But if it was a short sentence, like, I was just waiting take for me to the pool, they could not do that. It's They could not do that at all. But those are fucking hard acts. They um, almost might as well just have dubbed their voices over. <laughs> yeah, they, uh, that, was, that was interesting. They, the, their, their accents started out okay, and then it just got worse and worse yeah, and worse and worse. Yeah, but then again, that's how it is with accents. Especially one that thick and hard. That, that's a fucking hard accent yeah. to do. Um, so there's a scene in this movie where, uh, where, um, Ultron has lifted up the city. It's this huge city that he's lifted up in the air and he's basically just going to drop it back down on the earth and wipe out human civilization. Captain America's up there and he refuses to do anything, basically. He even says at one point to, uh, Scarlett Johansson that, um, he's not leaving without every man, woman, and child getting off that rock. And she's like, at the expense of everybody else on the planet? I think they are trying to show heroes. And heroism. maybe they were trying to show heroism. something heroic, but what <laughs> he actually was doing was condemning our planet here on Earth. So the question is, is Captain America a bad guy or just an idiot? Sometimes he's an idiot, but he doesn't know about our times now, so... I would say he's an idiot. He's not a bad guy. He's an idiot. He's an absolute idiot. It's pretty... It's pretty... It's a pretty easy ma math computation to take into account that you got... Let's let's say, worst case scenario, 100,000 people in the city, and you've got 7 billion people on this planet. He probably just didn't realize it. <laughs> you must have failed math in fucking grade school. He didn't go to school. <laughs> Man, I'm telling you, that was... That, that scene just made me, like, want to slam my... my hand on my forehead and just like you maybe dance. it was like a weird exposition thing for the audience to understand i guess i mean <laughs> maybe maybe so maybe you know like but it was dumb and and he was an idiot and if if hey j kids just remember if it were up to captain america you'd be dead right now Eesh. <laughs> moving right along Eesh. Eesh. <laughs> um okay do these superheroes have an obligation do these superhero movies have an obligation to abide to the laws of physics? I feel like they should because half their stuff is physics. Here's the thing. They are the ones, again, who wrote their rule book. They're the ones who set this up in a real world. They're the ones who have set up, you know, semi-real. We'll, call it, we'll just call it pseudoscience. But it, they, they, they play it as though it's real. All right? You'd agree? Mm -hmm. So when you do things like have Captain America do a front flip off of his motorcycle, his moving motorcycle, and hold on to the handlebars and then flip it back over him and throw it as a weapon. That's just fucking stupid. <laughs> Again, that's how they're trying to ease him into being viable. I mean... You can throw a motorcycle! Like, that, that kind of stuff just... It's got to take everybody out of it. And, and like, it's not cool. That's the thing, is like, that wasn't cool because I immediately looked at him like, what was that? My dad's gonna be like, woo! <laughs> Maybe so. <laughs> My dad's gonna love this movie so hard. <laughs> <laughs> um, there are other, but there are other things. I mean, you know, do, don't you feel like these movies have set up a real reality? Like, they should, shouldn't they be at least semi abiding to their own rules? Yeah. I mean, what do you guys think? Like, don't, don't you feel like. The filmmakers owe it to you to to give you the realistic film that they have set up for you. I mean, I, I understand that the only reality of a movie is that it's a movie. You'll learn that in, like, Film School 101. But you still have an obligation. Like, I can't take a romantic comedy, for example, and then all of a sudden introduce Godzilla in the last 30 minutes. Because 
that's not the reality I've set up, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess you could argue that Quentin, Car Quentin Tarantino and Robert Rodriguez did that very thing with From Dust Till Dawn, but that was a different scenario. Half that movie's really good and half of it's really dumb, so <laughs> there you go. I mean, I guess that it does prove my point, actually. Um, so that kind of stuff, it's distracting to me. Is it distracting to you? Yeah. Uh... People, people, trolls in here are going to go, But Kyler, this is a movie. It's a Marvel movie. It's a superhero movie. How realistic do you want it to be? I guess in this case, it ain't got to be realistic. But, but to me, <laughs> but they you want me to as... stay a fan, you got you to gotta do something better than that. Moving right along. I'm going to take the back seat on this one. What were Ultron's motivations? I ultimately feel like they tried to make this an iRobot situation mixed with Ex Machina situation. I feel like the computer is too smart for its own good and feels that it's sh it becomes aware and it's over. It understands that humans are stupid and that their error in their ways and so I'm gonna help them. I'm gonna make this a better race. I feel like it's just a situation of the computer becoming completely aware of everything, being able to access any information and seeing the errors of our ways and wanting to change that. I would agree with you except for all of that all of what you just said happened in 30 seconds. There was no there was no learning. He just he was birthed into being a dickhead. Like, he, was, he immediately was bad. He was bad from the moment he spoke, the very first moment. Um, and th therefore... He questioned why th he there, had questions. Yeah, but you can't just, you can't just say, why, why don't I have a body? Because you're a program. You're a smart, you're a smart program. Well, I want to kill everybody now. I mean... <laughs> he's, just, I feel like he's just aware. He's got aware and realized that he is actually... Over human race. You I don't feel do like anything. that's the way AI works. I feel like, I feel like X Ma don't slap X Machina in the face with this film. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not trying to, but I feel like Yo, you <laughs> they see, tried. You want to see AI done right? Go watch X Machina. You want to see AI done wrong? Go watch Age of Ultron. <laughs> um, I, I mean, I, he was a flat bad guy. Loki at least had motivation for what he wanted to do. This bad guy d didn't. He went from he went from waking up to wanting to crash a meteor into the planet. But he thought it would be the better the better to start the race over because they'd be better. But he knew that he was gonna he was going to eliminate the entire human race. It, he he had no intention of saving anybody. But when you could create your own race, what does it matter? Well, be, but then his motivations are not for the human race. His motivations are for machine. And that's why it's confusing. What do you guys think? Well, all I can say is, is his, mul his, his motivations were that of a 10-year-old getting picked on in school. Like, there was zero rationality to it. He was a badass bad guy, but he was an idiot. He, I mean, he had, he had, there was no heart in what he was doing. At some point, you could theoretically have looked at Loki's situation and sympathized with it. You can't do that with this guy because he came to the conclusion the moment he was he was he was woken up, which makes it seem less like artificial intelligence and more like bad programming. Okay, not even humans can die in this universe. Why? Captain America can't die. Iron Man can't die. Thor can't die. The Hulk can't die. Black Widow can't die. Hawkeye can't die. Not even the humans. Not even the the like people you don't know. There's a scene where Captain America goes to save a woman and the bumper rips off of this car as she's hanging and she starts to fall and she's falling to her death and you could feel, you could cut the tension in the theater with a knife. And I thought for the first time, I was like, oh, some real character development because this is what it is. Like they would lose people and that would affect them and, and sure. that, w that, is, that is powerful storytelling. And what they do? She got saved by Thor. Why in the hell can they not die? None of the heroes can die. None of the people can die. All the suspense in your movie has been removed. Do you enjoy that? Do you enjoy feeling like everybody is safe? Now, you could argue, well, somebody off-screen died. You didn't see that. You have no connection to it. The heroes have no connection to it. Therefore, you're just watching a bunch of apes running around throwing rocks at one another. 
Sorry, I'm passionate. <laughs> you got serious real quick. I think you said like 8 million cuss words. You're gonna have to like put Captain America's face up here. No, I'm just <laughs> I'm not. I'm not doing that for these anymore. So I can cuss. I know that they probably only did it to make it easier for kids to watch the film and not to recycle violence into the world. Parents, people die. You need to let your kid know this. It is more damaging to your kid to think that, that a human can go through all of this and live. <laughs> Hence why we have so many little kids jumping off of tables thinking they Superman. <laughs> Because it'll be okay. If they don't look, <laughs> if, if, if that is the real case, Marvel, you are doing children a disservice. Because you're setting them up for failure. You're setting them up to believe in things that don't exist. Oh, it's okay. I cut my arm. I can just go to the machine and it'll make it better. It don't <sighs> exist yet. I mean, they, they do, but not like that. <laughs> so, ultimately, I know it's a fantasy universe. But ultimately, I just think they just don't want to deal with the backlash of parents and people being like, why'd they have to show that? Blah, 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 blah. Well, then this is why this movie is falling flat. Like, it's it's because of these little things that we're bringing, or that mainly I'm bringing up, that make this movie no different than the first film and, and, and honestly just not as good. And that's ultimately why it shocked me when that happened because I was just like, Really? What? They don't never do this. Well, and I've got my whole rant on that, <laughs> believe me. So, ultimately, I just think it's a way for them to avoid any controversial nonsense from parents. <laughs> and it's hilarious because parents take their kids to watch the craziest sh stuff. So, it's almost like, who are they really trying to protect? God only these? knows. <laughs> God only knows. Fantasy violence, like... Showing people that you can get shot without blood is more damaging to a child than showing that they can get shot with blood. I mean, have these kids play Call of Duty by like age of five? You know, <laughs> World of Warcraft, even you, you know. It's just... And I'm not trying to like get off on a, on like a violence in cinema tangent. I'm just I, because I'm I'm fine with violence in cinema, but but this kind of stuff like I think because there's so much supernatural reality in there, it takes away from that there is an actual reality. And so, seeing actual death might bring it more, the realities closer together. People should fucking <laughs> die in Marvel films. Period. <laughs> I'm not saying that I want to see their heads cut off. I'm not saying that I want to see legs or arms cut off. I'm saying that stakes should be real in these films if you want people to continue to watch them. Because I can't be the only person getting fatigued by this superhero genre, by this nothing ever happening different genre. Like, I can't be the only one. <laughs> Maybe I am. I don't what know. God. Maybe I'm just weird. Wooza. I mean, Wooza. but golly, I mean, it is so frustrating to, to like, when they, I'm telling you, when, when that woman dropped, I was like, they're doing it. They're finally doing it. Like, Cap the, Captain America is going to learn something from this. He's going to he's gonna figure out, like, sh shit, it's not all fun and games, man. Like, people, this is people's lives that, that, that's, that are, they're dying. Nope. We saved her. Everything's fine. No worries, guys. Now, here's the thing. Just to clarify, there is a scene where a woman actually did fall, but they didn't show it to her death. They didn't show anything. They just showed her falling. Falling, falling. And you're like, is somebody going to save her? But they cut it immediately. Where? They go to the next scene. It's before that happened. Really? And um, I saw it. I was like, dang, they kill her. But they don't show anything else that happened. And then they went into that scene. So, yeah, there's actually a scene. <laughs> but it's so quick that you almost don't realize that it's happening. And you're like, what? We'll have to. We'll have to. I mean, when we go see it again, we'll have to. We're going to yeah, go, gonna go see it again. Yeah, we're going to go see it again. So... Um, who knows? We, our opinions could change. If they do, we'll update this video. Um, okay, this huge spoiler. Huge spoiler. Huge. Huge. Huge spoiler. This is the only huge spoiler that we've got. Pretty much everything else was kind of a spoiler, as in it wasn't information that was given to us in the trailer. This, on the other hand, is a huge, huge spoiler. It will probably okay. affect your viewing experience if you watch it. So do not continue to watch if you haven't seen the film or if you care. If you don't, continue, fine. But don't bitch at us when... You're like, you ruined my movie. 
Okay, so that being said, it's all out of the way. I'm gonna say it. I'm surprised I hadn't seen it ruined on Facebook in general. No. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Quicksilver dies. Hard. Now, before any of you damn trolls out there decide that you want to be like, well, Kyler, thought you said the heroes didn't die in these films. Let me shut you right the hell up. <laughs> is really serious right now. <laughs> Quicksilver died, sure. This is his intro film. He doesn't have a billion dollar franchise behind him prior to this, solidifying the reason why he won't be killed. That's why, even though they removed Iron Man at the end of this film from the Avengers, he still lives because he's got a billion dollar franchise behind him. They will keep him alive to keep milking that billion dollars as long as they possibly can. And that's why nobody else died. Even Black Widow, who should have. <laughs> Even Hawkeye, who <laughs> should have. I thought you for sure was gonna be the one to go. They kept them alive because because they have the potential to have their own standalone films, more of like a, more of like a James Bond or Mission Impossible kind of movie. Which he's already doing. <laughs> which, which I think they've already, I think that they are doing a Hawkeye and a Black Widow film. I might be wrong on that. Um, but I believe they are. Um, but, yeah, so they killed Quicksilver. Well, who cares? You didn't even know him. You don't know anything about him other than he wants to kill Tony Stark. Which is funny because Stark is simply the company that created the, the, the missile that killed his family. He's not even mad at the people who launched the missile. <laughs> so, anyways. Hashtag he's Magneto's son if you didn't know. That being said, <laughs> Quicksilver died. What do we think? I was kind of, like I said, I was shocked. I didn't, it was almost, this is probably the reason why they do this. Because I didn't want to see him die. Because I felt like I wanted to see him more. But. Was Quicksilver better in this film or the last film? <sighs> Not the last Man, film, last film, but X-Men Days of Future Past. X-Men's Quicksilver, they didn't give him an accent in that one either. Um. Ultimately, based off of fans, I know they liked the X-Men Quicksilver better than this one. I felt like this one had more character. The X-Men one had more character. And this one, they set him up to be an easy let go. We well, didn't know that. enough about him to really care that he died. Even though it sucked that he died, he didn't have enough behind him. Ooh, he had rockin' Nikes. That was about it. So... <laughs> Ultimately, this one was better. This one had better hair. I like the silver. But I wasn't shocked. I mean, I wasn't shocked. That's all I can say. <laughs> I wasn't shocked. That's all I can say. Um, one thing we missed. Uh, we'll go ahead and just get off that. One thing we missed. The we, Me and her must have, like, I don't know, morphed brains or something. Because when, when the audience laughs, we don't. When the audience gets excited... It's just not. I mean, we don't. Um, it's not that. It's not that we're not enjoying the film, or that we don't get the jokes. It's that it's not funny, or it's not suspenseful. Pretty simple. Mm -hmm. So, there's a scene again. Spoiler: where Vision comes out and he picks up horse th horse thammer. He picks up <laughs> horse thammer. Sounds like a disease. Uh, he picks up Thor's hammer, which is the only person to do so. Um, what was the collective response, Monica? <gasps> Yep. And here's mine and Monica's response. Word. Yep. It's pretty much saw that coming. A bunch of casuals in the theater don't know nothing. You know, and, and it's not... <laughs> sorry, y'all. Sorry, y'all. It's, it's not that, you know, like, we knew that that was going to happen, but, I mean, it just wasn't... They made such a big deal about nobody being able to pick up Thor's hammer that by the time Vision was introduced to us, it only made sense that he was going to be able to do it. I mean, it was just... Like, this is just, like, simple, basic filmmaking. Everybody gives... Nah, never mind. I'm going <laughs> to not go off onto that tangent. Um, anyways, yeah. So, that's what we thought. Uh, this is our last question uh, that we're going to field. I'm going to ask the question. Monica is going to answer. Uh, I'm going to answer. And then we'll do the little wrap-up. So, the question is, is this the beginning of the end of the Marvel Cinematic Universe? I think it's very possible. I don't think that they're going to have enough... To sustain, because uh, I don't think that there's going to be enough to sustain because there's so many stories in this universe. I feel like they might jump into an entirely different thing, and 
ultimately it's going to become the same format over and over and over. And while some people like that, some people that are hardcore fans to the comic books and the stories might get a little bit bored about it and really start to nitpick the things that they're doing. I mean, I more or less agree wholeheartedly that I think that using this, using the first Avengers as proof and the second Avengers as the follow-up, they're the same film. The filmmakers didn't know how to make a different movie. They knew how to change names. They knew how to introduce new characters. They knew how to, how to produce conflict, but they didn't know how to make a different film. They made the exact same film as they did three years ago. And all of these other films are doing the exact same thing. You look at the Ant-Man trailer, it's the same, it's, a, it's just Iron Man revisioned. Mm -hmm. You look at, uh, well, you look at how they did Iron Man when they first came out, it was just like, they didn't even know where they were going originally. And then they, then they finally figured out, okay, we want to do mm -hmm. like this bigger thing. But they're running out of ideas, guys. They're running out of ideas and it's very, very apparent. That's why they're reaching for these new superheroes that nobody even knows. Like Guardians of the Galaxy. I liked the movie fine, but nobody knew who they were. And when I first saw the preview, I thought it looked ridiculous. Now, they accomplished it fine, but I think that that's the exception to the rule rather than the rule. And I think Ant-Man, I think we're going to see that be the rule here soon. Hope I'm wrong. I'm, I, you know, I enjoy the films, but uh, it's not looking good. So that's what we thought of, uh, of Avengers Age of Ultron. Any final thoughts? See it. Sorry, I uh, sorry, I kind of took over that one. I had a lot to say. I apologize. Uh, hey guys, thanks for tuning in. If you stayed through uh, to the very end, uh, we really appreciate it. Make sure to uh, let us know what you thought about this in the comment section below. And don't be afraid to hit us up on Facebook and Twitter. And there's a like button. There's a subscribe button. There's sh like share buttons. If you don't know how to share, just go up here and copy the link and pa pa paste it on. Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Let people know that we exist because we really like doing these videos and we'd like to keep uh, expanding so that we can keep doing them for you. Sound good? All right, good. You guys be good and I'll catch you later. See you, love you, bye. Peace.